Well done, boys. The last job went fine. There's no evidence or witnesses left against us. Thanks to your persuasive methods, they won't even squeak. Thanks, boss. We try to make you happy. <laughs> well, you certainly did. But today we're here for something else. Pauly has a pretty interesting proposal. Well, I met a guy from Kentucky, William Gates. Everyone knows that Kentucky makes the best homebrewed whiskey. Well, anyway, this guy almost threw up when he tried the whiskey which Morello sells here. When he gave me a drink of this stuff, they brew back there, forget about it. I won't drink anything else. So I asked him about it, right? He said it was no problem and that he could deliver me as much as I wanted. You know, I got jazzed thinking about the dough we'd make on it. Well, I ordered a truckload of it. I said to myself, if it catches on here, we can make a bigger deal later. It would certainly be a good replacement for the loss of our Canadian. I like it. Nice one. Me too. So we're gonna pick up some beautiful booze. I'm already looking forward to it. Where are they hiding it? They'll meet us in the big parking garage. We have to be more careful than we were before. You'll get to the place by car with two other boys. They'll be your escort on the way back. You three pick up the truck and take it to our warehouse in Hoboken. The boys are already out in the yard waiting in the car. And bring me back a bottle so I can finally drink something decent. Count on it, boss. Get in. We're going for some medicine. Here, Tom. This might come in useful. Thanks. Wait for us here, boys. We'll be back in a little while. When we drive out, follow after us. Then, we'll have a shot at the warehouse. Sure, boss. They're waiting for you already, mister.
magnet now. What the hell was that, Polly? Who were those hoods? How should I know? Okay, okay. Well, we can't hang around here waiting for more of them to show up. Let's get the truck and get the hell out of here. Tom, you drive. I'll follow behind in one of the other cars. Cats keep beating up your chops. I ought to turn you into the cops. The biggest deal I'm gonna lay on you, baby. Don't cop your broom, park the body and wait. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. You tell everybody I'm busted. You talk so much you got me disgusted. But you run your mouth and I run my business, brother. You Look run out. your mouth and I run my business, brother. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. You start in telling me you're my pal and end up telling me how to handle my gal. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. You run your juicy mouth and I run my business, brother. Just run your juicy mouth and I run my business, brother. You always telling me what to do, saying I wouldn't do that if I was you. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. Just clap your liver lips and I run my business, brother. Clap your liver lips and I run my business, brother. If I followed your advice on how to make dough, I'd been in the jailhouse long ago. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. They're stuck on a slight pool. But you run your mouth and I run my business, brother. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. You start in telling me you my pal and end up telling me how to handle my gal. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. 
You run your juicy mouth and I run my business, brother. Just run your juicy mouth and I run my business, brother. You always telling me what to do, saying I wouldn't do that if I was you. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. Just clap your liver lips and I run my business, brother. <laughs> clap your liver lips and I run my business, brother. If I'd followed your advice on how to make dough, I'd been in the jailhouse long ago. You run your mouth and I run my business, brother. <laughs> Okay, we did it. So it looks like Morello got in the way of things again, boss. We can't seem to shake off this bad luck. Boys, you won't believe this, but it's completely the other way around. The only one who really had bad luck this time was Morello. What? I found out who our Mr. Gates really was. And? Gates was never really from Kentucky. He was a small-time thief who stole the goods from Morello and wanted to sell them to us. Morello doesn't think that he almost stopped our deal, but that we pinched a truckload of his most expensive whiskey. I bet that bastard's happy now. Unbelievable! Well, that worked out just fine. Let's drink to that. To another success, boys. Salute! The end of Prohibition in 33. You probably weren't too happy, huh? Nah, the end of the good old days. Yeah, not too happy, but it wasn't all bad. Eventually, I did get married to Sarah and had a daughter. It was a good time. But life went on in business. We made a huge amount of dough during Prohibition, which we invested into new deals. A lot of them were legitimate. We had regular firms like construction, transport, restaurants. We ran labor unions. And of course, there was gambling, betting, the lotteries. We actually did really well. We just tried to stay out of drugs, even if it wasn't always easy. Come on, business is business, right? You're way off there. Because in Austria ain't no patties at Chinaman. With drugs comes big money and even bigger problems. When someone has a problem with the cops because of drugs, he does the sensible thing. He admits it. If his family catches him, they rub him out. Drugs are taboo. So what, there's some kind of grand poobah passing judgment? Something like that. The leading families choose a boss of bosses. They sort out the big problems and set the rules of the game. So, criminals who break the law have their own courts that judge them? That's just great. Laws aren't changeless holy words. Every country in the world has their own. It's just somebody with a lot of power applying their own will. It depends on the person whether they'll serve someone else blindly or apply their own will. 
Why should the Don be restrained? The Mafia prevailed through prohibition with its own laws. A handful of poor, uneducated immigrants from Sicily were stronger than all the laws, courts, and police here in the States. That took some doing. What? With murder? With the suffering they caused? Come on. You think that the Mafia just murders innocent people? The Mafia punishes those who break laws. And the majority of your laws, too. Unfortunately, we can't put anyone in jail or fine them. Everybody who comes and works for us knows what to expect if he breaks the rules. People lie and steal, and there are lots of criminals here who get unbelievable pleasure when they steal from a mob. As well as the mafiosos who get pleasure from cheating the state. And what about all the payoffs, robberies, and raids, huh? Hey, the cops ain't no saints, neither. No Don encourages his men to go around harming people. And what other people do on their own isn't our concern. And as for payoffs, most people come to the Don for help and advice on their own. And they'll pay gladly for it. The Don is an esteemed person. But not every Don is like Salieri. That's the truth. There you go. Your system works, but you know why? Because you're a bunch of selfish murderers. And you only care about your own gain. All your efforts are spent ensuring that you live like pigs in shit. That's why you're so successful. You're only looking out for yourselves. We look out after everybody. A few cops have to ensure law and order for all. And that's a much harder job. That's true. But you can easily leave the Don outside your protection. He'll watch his own back. And what about you? What are you sitting here for? 